What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Scale News Update. The last update for 2022. Been quite a year. But if you enjoyed the Scale News Update all year long, hit the like button today. Let's jump into this week's topics. First for this week, Tamiya is going to give us a new body choice. The new style Toyota Land Cruiser, the 300 series. They're gonna put this on the CCO2 platform. And it appears that from the uh, Japanese websites that this may come on a new longer wheelbase CCO2. So it will have solid axles front and rear, slightly longer wheelbase than the normal CCO2, which is around that 10 inch wheelbase. So this body may be closer to that 11 and change, maybe even a little longer, who knows, but maybe a usable body for other projects then in the future also. So keep an eye out for that specifically if you're a Land Cruiser fan. Next, Vanquish Products released brass portal knuckle covers for the F10 axles. These are a little over 120 grams per side and they'll work on your F10 portal axles. They won't work on the Ultra or anything like that. These are specifically for the F10 portals. The 350 hub on Vanquish wheels will clear these as long as you don't have any other accessories in there that could interfere. So if you've got one of those trucks or a truck equipped with those axles, here's another option part for you. Next, this is like anti-news. You guys remember the FMS Mashigan? Well, it seems to be gone. <laughs> At least wiped from the FMS website as far as the actual truck goes. You can still get some replacement parts like the body pieces and things like that. All except the actual hood and grill, which were what looked very suspiciously exactly identical to a Jeep product. So it looks like maybe Jeep sent them a letter and actually got them to stop selling this thing. It's slowly disappearing from places. The actual stock is gone from many of them as well. Now that might've just been actual sales, soaking that up and them not getting another batch out. But maybe we'll see it come with a angry grill here in the near future, <laughs> or maybe not. Hard to say. Uh, if you've got one, maybe, maybe hold on to it. Maybe it'll be... <laughs> Maybe it'll be worth a little bit more than it was new, or maybe it'll just pop up under a different name somewhere else. Who knows? Interesting nonetheless. Next, we have some news from ProLine. A lot of news. Those guys are busy over there. But first, we've got a new SCX6 body option. This is a cliffhanger. So if you're super performance oriented, this is going to be a great body choice for you. A little bit better clearance, front and rear, less to hang up on. Either way, the cliffhanger body looks great in 110 scale also 124 scale, now 16 scale. Like 90 bucks for this body, which really isn't that bad considering what SCX6 bodies normally cost. It's cool to see some more body options coming for the SCX6 from ProLine, that K10 excluded. That was no good. Then ProLine released the 2.2 Hyrax LP. These are super interesting. These are a 2.2 Hyrax, but they're only 5.25 inches tall. This is a great size for something like a Capra where a full 575 2.2 is kind of big on that truck, just almost too big in most situations, but five and a quarter inch tall is a really good size. I had seen custom sets of the 1.9 Hyrax cut and shut to fit a 2.2 wheel, basically to these exact specifications for the last couple of years now. And here we go now. With class three Sorker rules saying that you now have to run a tire that's bigger than 475, this might be a very popular option coming to the competition scene. So a cool new release. Proline also released a new 1.0 tire. This is a Interco Super Swamper and it's 2.25 inches tall. So I think that's their tallest 1.0 tire that they've released to date. And lastly from Proline, specifically made for the scale trucks, they released a Proline bug body. 12.3 inch wheelbase, got the big full fenders, but imagine those getting cut off and this kind of performance trail truck oriented Bug bodies were super popular back in the early RC crawling days. Uh, they were, they performed, they performed really well. They rolled over great because they had that nice rounded top in both directions, and just overall were a solid body choice. I could see that becoming the case with this new body as well. Kyosho's got another phaser coming out. That phaser is their nice little on-road platform, and this is a '57 Chevy, the second best looking of the Tri Fives, but. In Kyosho style, it's just done super well. Looks absolutely fantastic. Phaser platform underneath, basically unchanged as it's just a solid little on-road platform. Nothing too crazy, but priced well. If you love 
your try fives, this is uh, this has got to be the top of the list. I don't know that I remember ever seeing a 57 Chevy done this well in one ten scale. And then I also ran across uh, on the Kyosho blog from Japan that the phaser rally conversion is supposed to come out in about the next month or so. It's been teased quite some time ago and it was supposed to be available to stores way back, but I don't know that that ever really happened. But it looks like now we're gonna start seeing that in the next month or so. So if you have one of those phaser platforms and you wanna convert it over to rally, I mean, 57 Chevy rally, that sounds very fast and the furious. And I wanna thank Team Garage Hack for sponsoring this month of the Scale News Update. TGH wanted to focus on education for this month. And we've talked a little bit about overdrive and different options and the ways that overdrive can help your vehicle. But one thing that we haven't talked about is just the very basics of gear ratio. And a lot of people just don't understand how to fully calculate gear ratio. And really it's just either multiplication or division. You just have to know which way to do it in each time. It doesn't have to be all that overcomplicated. Say you wanna calculate the overall gear ratio of your axle, a portal axle specifically. Calculating a gear ratio is simply taking the output and dividing it by the input. And that's how you calculate the gear ratio of one gear set. Take a stock AR44 gear set, the ring gear, the larger gear or the output gear, that is a 30 tooth gear. Now, the input gear is an eight tooth gear. So like we said, it's output divided by input. So 30 divided by eight is 3.75. That is the standard ratio of an AR44 gear set. Next, you'd move to the portal box and a stock Capra portal will have a 23 tooth bottom gear, the output, and a 12 tooth top gear. So you take the 23 divided by 12 and you'll come up with 1.92 to one. So now you have your two gear ratios, 1.92 and 3.75. To calculate the total ratio of that axle, you just multiply those two numbers together. 3.75 times 1.92 will equal 7.2. So that means 7.2 revolutions of the input gear on the axle will give you one revolution of your tire. And you can apply that same process to the entire truck. Understanding how to calculate gear ratios and being able to do it for your entire truck is a super important thing in RC. It can make sure that you don't end up putting too much stress on your electronics, and it can also become a tuning aid so that you can then move on to calculating things like overdrive percentages as well. And you know who has a ton of gear ratios to choose from? Team Garage Hack and all of their transmission and portal gear, transmission gear options. But let's thank them again for sponsoring this month of the Scale News Update. A while back, we talked about some information that came from Capo on the release of an upcoming R34 GTR model from them. Capo has a number of very expensive, very detailed models. Calling them a full RC can be a stretch at times, but they do look good often. Now this one was supposed to be a GTR, all wheel drive, cool rack and pinion steering, detailed, you know, hard body with, you know, good looking paint. And the photos that we're seeing of actual physical prototypes now definitely seem to be following along with that through to scale all the way from the style and design of construction of the wheels to the RB26 sitting under the hood with the fake turbos and fully plumbed just Overall, a very cool. I did send a inquiry to see if I could get pricing. If I get pricing before this video goes live, I'll add it to the news. If you wanna take a guess on what it'll be, have a stab at it. I, uh, I don't know yet, $28.99, official guess. We'll see how close I am. I should just do like 10 guesses right now and then edit them in and just pick the one that's right if I get it. For you 1 7 scale Arma owners, that Biddy Designs 1 7 scale Viper is now in stock in the US. So if you don't want to order from overseas, you can get that thing domestically now. One of the best looking 1 7 scale bodies I've seen for that car so far. For those of you 1 10 scale cliffhanger owners, I released a 3D printable cage for your cliffhanger, including interior parts, a dash, and four seats that will drop in there as well as that interior cage. You don't have to get the interior parts if you just want the cage. Both of those files are available separately and they're only a buck 99. So if you want to 3D print a cage for your cliffhanger, I'll put a link to where you can find the cage and interior parts 
in the description below. In episode 188 of the Scan News Update, I asked you guys for predictions on what you thought would come in 2022. That was the first episode of the year, and this is the last. I went through and I read all of the comments in there and tried to find the ones that had the best, without being too vague, predictions for the year. I'm gonna give you the six best or closest comments from that episode. First one was from Brandon Liptak and it says, also, my prediction is a factory made small scale monster truck. I'd love to see that. And we definitely did see that. FMS had the Max Smasher released this year. And there was also like the Furitech ones, a little less like full factory build, but we did see the 124 scale monster truck scene definitely pick up speed with aftermarket support from J Concepts and different body options, of course. We definitely saw an introduction of that, which we hadn't seen before. Next one's from Jamie Rodriguez and it says, Happy New Year, my predictions. HPI will finally break out with some new intros and really try to hit it hard. Although supply chain issues will impact that. Also, Losi will introduce a few new V100 offerings for the on-road market. Red Cat will bring out some more lowrider body styles. I think he bookended it with correct ones, the low CV 100s. I don't think we saw any information on, but HPI definitely made strides this year. We saw new releases that actually had some new to it, maybe not fully new, but moving in the right direction, the momentum continued to go and it looks like they could be on a pretty strong path for 2023. Let's hope. And Red Cat definitely released more body options for their low rider platform. So got it there. Miss the low C, but two out of three ain't bad. Next, Outcast RC said, my prediction is that Traxxas will jump into the 24 scale market and come out with something to rival the SCX24, perhaps with a new design that mimics their TRX platform. 24 scale, 18 scale, whatever you want to call it, it's definitely something to go up against the SCX24. And I think they did a pretty good job. And specifically, it does mimic the TRX4 in some ways, as well as carrying its name. Predictions that Traxxas would enter the mini market were fewer between than people thinking that Traxxas would go after something like the SCX6. So that's why I thought that this one was a good one to choose. Then Stefan Varen said, FMS will release a one tenth scale trail crawler. They know how to do it. And this is the most popular scale they haven't touched yet. <laughs> They definitely did, but now it's gone. The fate of the mash again is just hanging out there. We don't know. They obviously had some other trucks that were labeled at weird scales that still kind of fit in one tenth, like with the one six Jimny and the Rock Hobby uh, one six Willys. Those are basically still like 10 scale cars as far as actual size in the market goes. But they did say that the mash again was supposed to be 10 scale. I think I'd still give them the win on this one. Next one's from Wade Smith, and it said, my prediction is a full release of a Traxxas flatbed tow truck, very similar to the limited edition Snap-on flatbed. And nailed that one because they released the Ultimate RC Hauler, which was basically dead on to the Snap-on, different color, a few different other little things with lights and things like that, but nailed it. There wasn't much whisper of that being planned to happen, so nailing that prediction was pretty good. And lastly, Visionary RC said, I predict a stripped down version of the VS410 Phoenix with a straight axle F10 and regular VFD. I'm predicting the price to be between 370 and 415. Other than, ha other than having the VFD twin still, he nailed it with the other features and the price came out at 389. So right dead in the middle of his prediction. Pretty good. All around, those were some solid predictions. Lots of ones that people thought would be an obvious new release and hoping that would hit the market, but didn't quite make it. So it's that time of year again. Drop your predictions for 2023 in the comments below. Let's hear them. I'm gonna mark down in my notes to come back to this episode to see which ones you got right. Try and be somewhat specific so that it makes sense for me to pull it. Not just that Axial will release a new truck that will be large or small whatever it may be. Let's hear them. Looking forward to another good year ahead for RC. Hopefully 2022 was a good year for you. If it wasn't, I wish you all of the best for 2023. Happy trail trucking ahead. With that, as always, if you enjoy the news, hit the like button, subscribe, notifications. You know the deal. Happy new year. We'll see you for the Scale News Update in 2023.